Okay, so in this clip I just wanted to show you how we do our production. I've already pre-cut the hemp fiber and I'm using the channels which are 54 centimeters in length. The first thing I do is I just take one of the hemp fiber, I place it on top of the channel and I then just rinse and repeat. This makes it a lot easier and I can stack a lot of them on a very small place. I always pre-prep my channels, even if in this case I only have 10 channels, but usually I have hundreds of channels. After all the channels have been prepped, uh, the next step is to get spread them out as much as possible so we can easily work with as many as possible. Sometimes we have too many channels and we have to do multiple layers, but in this case we only have 10 so we can put them out like this. The next step here is that we need to water down all of the hem fiber here. So we do it by using just a hose and we just water on one side of the hem fiber and we water it down quite heavily here and it doesn't really affect uh, if we overdo it or the more the better in this case the same so after everything has been watered down the next step is to move on to the seeds so the seeds or how much seeds is going to go on the channels are very specific depending on what seed type you are using. For example, in this case we are using broccoli. Uh, for these 54 cm channels we just need about 10 grams. Uh, you can measure it out, but as I have done hundreds of these sprays, I usually eyeball it. So when you're putting out the seeds on the channels, you want to try and avoid to do like this. Uh, now we have a lot of seeds in one place, but you want to do it uh, spreading out a little bit like I do right now. So one of the problems that can occur if we have a lot of seeds in one place it's that it's going to affect the uh, amount of problems that you're going to get in that particular response uh, because it's going to be super dense and when it's super dense it's going to attract more molds and all other bad things. Also sometimes it can the growth can be quite inhibited by the amount of seeds in one place. After the seeds has been spread out, it's time for the second watering just to make sure everything is as moist as possible. If you for example are using a high pressure nozzle, make sure you don't spread out the seeds like I did here. That will cause a lot of issues and you will have an uneven growth. So when the watering is done, the next step is that we're going to move on to stacking everything again. So this is how we do our germination. The stacking creates an effect where you keep the humidity inside and also you apply some pressure on the seeds. So when you have the germination, they will be very even when they start to grow up. The other thing which we have found out which is very, very important to do is when we put the, the stack channel for germination, we have to have it at an angle. Uh, one of the reasons for that is if we just put it in like this, there's going to be too mo much water inside of it and that will create a anaerobic area. So when we put, out, put it at an angle like this, the gravity will actually allow all of the excess water to be drained out. So depending on, for example, if you have a germination room where you have a high humidity, you don't need to do any extra watering or anything. If you have it as we have now, we have it in our growing room, uh, the humidity is quite high, then we don't really need to add any water during the germination process. But if we have a very low humidity, we probably have to add some water maybe one or two times during this germination phase. Another thing that will happen during the germination is on the day 3 or 4 they will start to push up the channels and that will create less friction between the channels and that will make and that will make uh, the channels slide and all of the channels that has been on angle will just crash coming crashing down on the floors. This is why we have a stop on our wagon. So here we can see a few channels that has been done and a few that has just been a few days in the germination process. When you're starting out, it's always a good practice to, to check on the channels, see how they look inside, if there's any sort of problem that has arisen. Okay, so after a few days, this case about four or five days, we have all of the channels have been germinated. 
very clear indication of that is that all of the channels has been pushed up and you can also see some parts has been also a little bit more greener this is the case if for example you don't have a germination room that i don't have here for example or in this case so the end parts has been in contact with light and they have started and it has started its greening process here so the next step for these channels is moving them from this wagon into the growing system Okay, so I hope this video provided you a little bit more information about how the production is done in the system from a hemp fiber until the germination phase is done and when you, before you put it into the watering system or the lighting system here. If you need any more information about other processes in the system, make sure you check out our other videos here. Have a great day!